One of the most challenging moral obligations is honoring your parents, and especially elderly parents, as they become more needy, as they become more dependent. It's not an easy thing to do. So the big question, are we obligated to help our elderly parents? And this question is acutely growing as the largest demographic today are the elderly due to higher life expectancy, health, medical interventions. And it's a question that isn't just about a moral obligation, it's also about our spiritual well-being. What is, lies behind our relationship with our parents, both when we're children and they take care of us, and as they get older, and we may need to take care and support them. So please join me in this important discussion. Are we obligated to care for our elderly parents? Hi, Simon Jacobson here, and welcome to this program titled, Are We Obligated to Care for Our Elderly Parents? This program is dedicated by Rina Kamisarenko in honor of a refuah shlema to Alex Ben Bella. God bless him until 120. One of the most challenging obligations we have, moral obligations, is honoring our parents. It's the fifth of the Ten Commandments and is considered to be a foundation of every civilization. Well, the basic logic behind it is very straightforward. Look what our parents have done for us. Parents, from the moment we're conceived, pregnancy, birth, the nurturing, the care, the support. I mean, everything about us is completely dependent on our parents, especially in our early formative years. So it makes total sense that we reciprocate with gratitude and with honoring these individuals, the mother and father that brought you into this world and took care of you. Now, I know we can ask the question, what about parents who've hurt or even abused their children? I've discussed this in other programs. You can easily find on MeaningfulLife.com how to honor parents who don't seem to deserve honor. But that's a different discussion. Here we're talking about something else entirely, though there's overlap. So it makes total sense, out of gratitude, out of simple menschlichkeit, simple um, decency, to honor our parents. And that's even when they're not in need of us, and we're not dependent, just the mere fact of honoring. This doesn't mean your parents are perfect. This doesn't mean your parents are God. They can make mistakes. And there are indeed areas, if they tell you to do something that goes against divine law, against moral obligations, that's not something we have to do. Because they too answer to so on. But overall, the idea of respecting and honoring makes total sense. And yet, we find it difficult. The obvious reason is because they're too close for comfort. Maybe that's not the right word, too close. They're very close for comfort. And you take for granted that which is close to you. Things that are strangers, you often will behave in a more civil way. You put on proper etiquette at home with your parents. You let everything go. And therefore, sometimes it reveals the the worst of you, sometimes the best. That's on the most basic level. Secondly, our parents know us so well in a way you don't feel ever judged by them. So again, there's no real reason, there's no incentive to be on your best behavior. And finally, perhaps because it's such a powerful connection, so there is that element, that tension between our connection to our parents and then our need to find independence. 
to cut the umbilical cord, not just physically, but also psychologically and emotionally. So there's that tension as we become separate from them and independent of them in childhood and then in the young teens and then teenage years and adult life. There is a tension. The first time you leave home to school, a child will usually cry. First time they go to summer camp. First time they move away. But then there's an independence that develops, which is critical. So it's a healthy balance to have a life where you have loving parents, both loving the parents of the children and the children to the parents, but there's also a need for space and boundaries until the children are ready to build their own families. And that requires also boundaries. Sometimes in the name of love, we can suffocate each other. So all this is, required, is, is a necessary to review. But here our focus is our elderly parents, caring for elderly parents. Because here the challenge becomes far greater. When parents are completely functioning, have a job, health-wise, independent themselves, honoring is still necessary. And I don't just mean once a year, at Father's Day or Mother's Day, or birthdays and so on, but on an ongoing basis. But when a parent becomes more in, a, in, a, in, a, in an infirmed state, where the parent may be compromised health-wise, or work-wise, or the way they move about, or something happens as parents age, and especially if it affects their mental and emotional faculties, it becomes far more challenging. Because now, in a way, the child has to somewhat be a parent. Now, I'm, I'm talking in, in very severe cases, very extreme cases. We're dealing with situations where you actually need, your parent can't even be there for you. They may even, if they're suffering Alzheimer's or other dementia or other forms of incapacitation, so there for sure there is that need. And this doesn't preclude our responsibility to hire help. It doesn't mean we have to do everything ourselves. But as we'll be discussing, that there's more than just an obligation. This is a relationship that continues. Even when the parent is no longer able to be completely functional and dependent on their own. But the challenge is great. The challenge is great both emotionally, physically, time-wise. We all know the famous Harry Chapin song, Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon, where the father is not really there available for his child. And he's always telling him, I'll soon be there, we'll have a good time soon. And then, and the son keeps waiting for his father and keeps aspiring to be like his father, and then indeed, that's what happens. As the child, as the son grows into an adult and the father calls him, he's always telling him, well, the children have a cold and I'm busy. And, and he realizes the father that his son has become just like him. As he was not available, so was the son not available. So it's both a very touching and a very piercing and painful song. But it captures one of the realities of our times, and especially today, where it's acutely obvious because the growing population and life expectancy and health, and health breakthroughs and medical breakthroughs have created a far larger group of aging, thank God. So as a result, they're far larger numbers. But it's not a numbers game here. On an individual basis, this big question, are we obligated to care for our elderly parents, is a very critical one. But I'm not here to speak about the very basic obligation that I think we all can agree whether it's difficult or not, that there's a responsibility. Who more is responsible to take care of our parents than ourselves? And it, obviously, considering the, how much they sacrifice for us. So that I think we all can understand. I want to talk about it on a deeper level. What really lies behind this commandment, this obligation of honoring parents? And by extension, even when it's difficult when a parent is in a compromised situation and needs more help than when they were younger, what does that tell us and teach us about us human beings? So this, of course, goes back to the priorities that we have. What are the most important things in life? In the song, Harry Chapin's song, and the day work and other distractions became more important than a relationship between a father and a son. When we all think, hear that, we all know that's, tr that's tragic. But some of us will say, well, that's reality. We have to pay support. The irony is 
I'm not there for my children because I'm there to provide security for my children. But the biggest security is you being there for them. So the relationship between parents and children, from parents to children, we all absolutely understand the importance because the child's formative years, early years, impressionable years, is completely dependent, especially in the early years on parents, and then on education and schooling, but parents play a tremendous role. You can say that almost all psychological, emotional challenges that we have can be somewhat traced to our childhood. And if not traced directly, if our childhood was more nurturing and more supporting and more validating, how much would it preempt the fears and insecurities and trust issues and other issues that we have in our lives? But it also goes the other way around. You see, there's no obligation, it doesn't say anywhere a commandment that parents should take care of their children, because it's obvious, it's biological, it's natural. But it does say children should honor parents. As a matter of fact, the commandment says, furthermore, and as a result of that, you will live long. Which is interesting. Why of all the commandments suddenly we're told the reward? And what exactly lies in that? Besides the gratitude and, 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 the, and the obvious moral, moral uh, obligation, the idea of reciprocating and gratitude and, and, and respecting those that have helped you. So another interesting thing, and this, is, this really dri- drives the point home, is that the Ten Commandments, there are two tablets, two sets of five commandments. Five between man and God, between the human being and the divine, and five between human being and human being. Which one, Honoring your parents, you'd think, belong in the second set of five. It's between humans and humans, children and parents. It should belong with not, not, not stealing, not killing, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, and so on, thou shalt not covet. And yet, it's the fifth of the first set between man and the divine. Why? The answer is, because honoring parents is not just the moral obligation. They did something for you, I'm doing something in return. That's the obvious. It goes deeper than that. You're actually respecting life itself when you honor your parents. Your life. Because your parents are the channels, the messengers, the ambassadors of the divine that brought life to you. In other words, it's not about honoring parents, it's about honoring God. It's about honoring the divine, the divine within yourself. That's what it's about. Of course your parents were the ones that actualized actualized it, but you always need the third partner. There'd be no life if it was not decided from above. Your parents are the vehicles, and not just the vehicles, the ones that also facilitate and actualize and like the gardeners, but they're not the ones that create the garden, but the gardeners that nurture, that protect, that cultivate. So honoring parents is honoring life, and that's why the word is honor. It doesn't say love. Love, if they deserve love, you give them love. But even if they don't deserve love, let's say for a reason that they may have hurt you in a very serious way, but you're honoring not just them, you're honoring the life that came through them. If you don't honor that, you don't honor yourself. <clears throat> and that's why it's in the first set, because it's ultimately a connection to divine life that traveled through your parents. That doesn't in any way minimize them, but it actually le- elevates them to being divine agents of life. And that's what you're honoring. And that's why it's not about your parents own you, and that's why you have to honor them. That's a mistake if parents try to convey that message that we're like God. That's not correct. You're honoring God that works through them. And that's why the reward is long life, because you're honoring life. So what do you get when you honor life? You get more of it. It's a direct tit for tat, direct result, cause and effect, action and reaction. You honor life, life honors you. So that gives us a deeper understanding of the relationship. So parents to children... They help not just give us life, but also to make sure to nurture that life. It should be a meaningful life, a purposeful life, a life driven by higher values, higher purpose. But it also works the other way around. When we honor our parents, we're also honoring life. So it's really putting our priorities in place 
And that's perhaps why it's so difficult. Like everything in life, it's so easy to get caught up in the means and forget about the end. We get caught up in our work, making money, other ways of enjoying life. But for what purpose? Honoring parents is so close to home, is so much part of you, because it's the very essence of life. And that's why it can be so challenging, because it's about honoring life itself. And when your parents get in your way, so to speak, or they get in your hair, as some people say, they're getting too involved, we feel threatened in a way. And we rebel. So rebellion in the name of independence in a healthy form is a healthy thing, and parents should actually encourage that. But rebellion that goes into the area of disrespect and dishonoring is dishonoring the very life, the relationship between parents and children, therefore, are one and the same as the relationship between you and your life. So with that in mind, now let's apply it to every given situation. If your life was threatened, you would leave work very quickly. You would leave everything aside and go do something to save your life, the same as the life of your loved ones. So for anyone to say, I have something more important than life itself, is a major distortion, as you can imagine. Now, with ourselves or our spouses and our immediate children, it may sometimes be easier. With our parents, we convince ourselves they can take care of themselves. But then there are moments and times in life when it's not always that way. And that's when we're deep, more challenged, but also it can bring out the best in us. When you read the stories and you hear the nobility, the commitment, the selflessness of a child coming to visit their parent, even when the parent is no longer conscious or the parent is no longer aware. There's something very, very powerful about that. I mean, the truth is it's also when spouses see each other that way. No one should ever know of this. What's powerful? Because you're seeing the real essence of life emerging. I'm ready to put everything aside. I remember that scene in Awakenings where um, those, uh, those people who in the 20s suffered some type of virus that caused them all to become like vegetables, but then they were revived through some magic medication, which ended up not working. It's a pretty sad ending, but, but when they come out of it, so one of the women who's coming to visit her father, and she reads to him every day, and she tells one of these people who came out of this coma, like comatose state, I don't know if my father hears me. He says... Yes, he hears you. He may not see it, but he hears you. Or the famous story where a woman was suffering from dementia. She was losing her memory and wasn't recognizing her family anymore. But her son continues to visit her. And the nurse says to him, you know, I know I see you love your mother, you love your, 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 your mother so much, your father so much, but he or she doesn't recognize you anymore. And the child says, yeah, but I recognize him. I recognize her. And what comes out that you see that there's an essential connection between child and parent. Our focus here is the child to parent because it's not the formative years of our parent, it's actually perhaps in their waning years later in life, or in every given, any given situation. So it's really about expressing what we really are made of, the very love and the connections that we have that are deeper than the superficial ones. Look, we can be so attached to our gadgets, to our phones, to our technologies, to all kinds of things that distract us. But where does life really play itself out? It's in our connections, our eternal connections. And ultimately... Honoring life is honoring eternity. And that's what children are. We are a continuing legacy of a chain that came from our parents, which in turn came from their parents, from their parents, all the way in an unbroken chain to the beginning of time, beginning of life itself. And the same thing with our children. So when you honor your parents, what you're doing is honoring life, you're honoring eternity. And sometimes the place where it's most expressed and most seen is when it's challenged. So are we obligated to honor 
and to care for our elderly parents? Absolutely. Even more so, precisely because of the challenge. Because what lies here is essentially the honoring of what life itself is like. My father passed away almost 18 years ago. This, this month will be 18 years. I miss him dearly. Did I honor him as much as I should have in his lifetime? I can assure you I did not. I took for granted many things. I loved him and tried to honor him. But, you know, every day you have your life. Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. You have your distractions. I think back about it and I say to myself, that's the essence. She lives in me every moment. My mother should be well. She does as well. So I try to, I can't say I dishonored him in a way that was in any blatant way. But it's interesting when you think about it. When I think about it, it's not just a matter of my father, I miss my father, I love him for this reason. It goes into the very foundations, the very genes, the very DNA of who I am. He was part of my life as my mother, may she be well in many years, for many years. A part of you even before you have memories. When they held you, when they cradled you. It shapes you before you were even aware of it. So it's a piece of you. And never ever forget that piece. So when there's a challenge, yes, it's difficult. The Talmud tells us, Rabbi Akiva, the great, great sage, perhaps the greatest Talmudic sage, his mother, as she got older, she was becoming somewhat senile, suffering from dementia. And sometimes she'd walk outside barefoot, and there were glass and pebbles and all kinds of materials that would cut up her feet, and he would get down on his hands and knees, this great sage. He didn't hire someone and have her walk on his hands. He cushioned her walk. He didn't say something's the matter with her, let's take her away, let's lock her up, or let's hire people that don't let her take a walk, or they take care of her. That's what he did. The gentleness in that, the kindness, the humility, teaches us about the very essence of who we are. And when I say honoring your own life, I don't mean doing it selfishly, because it's one extension. Life is one continuum. We are our parents, and our parents are us. Yes, in a different form and shape. And of course, the gene, the gene pool gets mixed up, but it's an extension. So it's, un, it's honoring and understanding the true forces that shape and define who we are. That's really the way we should pose the question. Are we obligated to care for our elderly parents? I would take out the word obligated. Obligated is more like a commandment. It's like a obligation. You do it no matter what, which is important. But it's more than obligated. We're honored to care for our parents. It should be our honor. It should be our gift. It's our blessing. Because by extension, we're honoring ourselves. We're honoring our children. We're honoring the future. We're honoring the past. We're honoring eternity itself. And it's an important thing to know. You know, we all have that uh, sarcastic attitude sometimes. Your father calls you, he's already retired, he's bored. So you give him a little time of the day. Father's Day comes, you send him a tie. His birthday, another gift. But you're busy, you're productive, you're busy working hard. Think about it next time. Pause, put everything aside, smile, and remember that there was that father and that mother that once was patient with you. Now there's that the video goes around vi viral where a son is sitting with his father. Very touching video. And um, a bird flies by. And the father, who's already an elderly man, asks his son, what kind of bird is it? And he tells him it's a certain type of bird. A few minutes later, what kind of bird is it? It repeats. And he keeps on asking him. Three times, four times. At some point, the son gets really frustrated with his father. He says, you've already asked me 15 times. I told you what kind of bird it is. And the end of the film, short video, the father says to him to bring a book from the house a book of childhood photos when he was a child, when this son was a young child. And they see a picture of them sitting on a bench. 
and the child speaking to his father, and he says, you asked me 30 times the name of the bird, and I told it to you each time when you asked me. It's so touching. So you could say, okay, a little child doesn't know, but here the father should know better. But it's not about whether you should know better. It's a sensitivity. It's a connection that's being made. And it teaches us how to transcend sometimes our moments, especially when there's a challenging situation, an ailing parent, aging parent. And there may be things that may even be embarrassing and difficult, but it's our job to maintain the dignity because we do remember, even if they don't remember. And there's somebody watching. And we should be watching. And this is where life plays itself out. That's where our deepest strengths come out, precisely when it's challenging. I think this is a lesson that needs to be shared with everyone, whether you're a parent or a child, or even if you're not a parent or a child yet, because it's a lesson in life. What matters? We live in a world that's so comfortable in so many ways, but it's also so selfish. It's about me, me, me. Questions like this, and perhaps that's the ultimate bottom line why this obligation, this commandment is so vital. Because it really brings up a much bigger question, what is most important in life? What do we honor most? What do we respect most? And the answer it should be eternity. And that manifests in the parent-child relationship, both ways. So may we continue to only have good times, healthy times. May your parents and our elderly citizens grow to be old and healthy in all ways, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically. But at the same time, let us always remember the connections that we have, the integral connections which lie at the heart and soul of what defines the very human being, the very divinity and dignity and majesty of our lives. Thank you. This has been Simon Jacobson, Meaningful Life Center. Meaningfullife.com is our website. Please check it out for a wide array of different materials and information about how to live a more meaningful life. And especially, please subscribe on our robust and growing YouTube channel. We just passed the mark of 200,000 uh, subscribers. So please join us. Please share this if it was meaningful to you. And I would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, your comments, your questions. Be blessed and let us continue to honor the most important aspect of life itself, the eternal divine connection that we have, the transcendence that defines who we, who we are. Be well and thank you. This program is brought to you by the Meaningful Life Center. Please help us continue our programs. Make even a small contribution at MeaningfulLife.com donate.